The fight is far from over. Tonight, we are taking a deep dive on both sides of the abortion debate to find out what the future may hold. With the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, there are questions all across the country about what may be to come. Our Paula Tupman set out to try to answer some of those tough questions today. And as you are about to find out, this issue is far from cut and dry. Battle lines are being drawn in the fight over abortion. First, we talk to pro-choice advocates. For those who choose abortion, there are real life consequences to an unplanned, unwanted pregnancy. The youngest pregnant patient I've cared for was nine. And, you know, for that patient, for a 12 year old, for anybody, for anybody who doesn't want to be pregnant, the effort it takes to get out of state if they're in a state where they can't access that care is devastating. Dr. Lauren Owens is a care provider for women, including those who must make the choice to terminate a pregnancy for a variety of reasons. It's absolutely a human rights issue that people anticipate being able to be in charge of their lives and to make the decisions that are best for themselves and their families without legislative interference, without with ensuring access to medical care. Today, Committee to Protect Health Care through the eyes of physicians made specific pleas. As physicians, we condemn Friday's ruling for, from the U.S. Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. This ruling is a devastating blow to abortion access and reproductive freedom for women across the country, including here in Michigan. But their legislative short game comes in terms of a petition drive to put the issue on the ballot as an amendment in November that would basically enshrine reproductive rights regardless of the 1931 statute Governor Gretchen Whitmer is already trying to permanently overturn. Michiganers don't want the government making these decisions for women is the bottom line. That's why it's so important that we pass the reproductive freedom for all proposal. It'll keep abortion legal and will keep it safe and it will keep it between doctors and patients in Michigan. Doctors like us strongly support this right as do the majority of Michiganders. We urge Michigan residents to get involved to support and pass this proposal. To learn how to do so, visit mireproductivefreedom.org. But the anti-abortion movement has been playing the legislative long game for nearly 50 years. Right to Life Michigan says the fight doesn't stop at the Supreme Court, but will now be fought on three fronts at the state level in Michigan. And for those women who are victims of rape or incest. Obviously, all of us abhor rape, and we do need to do a better job of convicting and prosecuting rapists. Get them off the street. The answer to rape is not abortion. The answer to rape is coming around that woman and surrounding her with love and support. But the child doesn't deserve the death penalty for the crime of his father. No one thinks that their nine-year-old is going to get pregnant. No one, you know, people find themselves in situations and they find their loved ones in situations that they never anticipate. And again, with many of these state bans, not having exceptions for things like incest, for rape, um, where does that leave folks? But coming up at six o'clock, Right to Life Michigan lays out its three prong plan to make sure all abortions are made illegal in the state of Michigan. I'll see you at six. Paula Tupman, Local 4. Currently, it is not illegal for physicians to perform abortions because of that 1931 law currently under injunction by a suit filed by Governor Whitmer.